Hello everyone and welcome to TechFix Flicks. In this tutorial we will download and use Recover, a free tool to recover deleted files in Windows 10. Our two most recent tutorials have focused upon backup solutions and routine backup remains the best defence against accidental file deletion. However, if we install Recover now it will be ready when we need it should we delete a file before we've had the opportunity to run the backup. We therefore open our default browser, in this case Google Chrome, and navigate to the Recover download page, shown on screen now and linked in the written description accompanying this video. We click on the link to download directly from ccleaner.com and the small installer of just 5.3 megabytes downloads. As we are using Google Chrome, we can click the upward pointing arrow, which inverts, generating a menu from which we have the option to open, which we click. Opening the file generates the user account control feature on a typical installation and because our actions have prompted this we can safely click yes to proceed. The setup screen appears and to focus upon it we close the browser window in the background. With the installer only now visible we deselect the option to install CCleaner. As a matter of fairness we would stress that CCleaner is a popular application but we always decline bundled software whenever offered. We briefly examine each of the customization options and make no changes as each of these options is in line with our preferences. In particular, we will make use of the context menu options to recover files in this tutorial. We therefore click install. The installation commences immediately with the usual progress bar indicating its status. We are then advised that setup has completed and we deselect the option to view the release notes which we don't need to consult at this time. The recover wizard appears although at this stage we are not actively looking to recover a deleted file, so we simply click cancel and to take into the main interface. This for now is as far as we need to proceed until we actually have cause to recover a file. Leaving the application installed upon our system will allow it to be instantly called upon should the need arise. It's now some time in the future. Let's accidentally delete a file. In our downloads directory are four files. Each file is of a different type and size, and we have an audio file, a video, a word document, and an image. We select our image, right click for a menu, select the option to delete, and it's gone. Our first recourse when looking for a deleted file should always be the recycle bin, which we open, and we find our file, we re-click it, and select the option to restore. The file leaves the recycle bin, and returns to the downloads folder. None of this is complicated, and none of this involves recover. However, in the panic of losing a file, it's always worth taking a moment so as not to overlook the obvious. Now let's make it more difficult. This time when we delete the file, we really mean it, and we hold the shift key while selecting the option to delete the file, thereby bypassing the recycle bin. We accept the warning that deletion is permanent. Now the file is gone and there is no simple means for recovery. This time we genuinely need recover. When we installed Recover, we accepted the addition of Recover options to the context menu. So when we right click on our downloads folder, a new item, Scan for Deleted Files, has been placed there. We click on that option. We are again required to give user account control consent to perform the scan, so we simply click Yes to begin. The scan commences and passes through three phases before completion. At the conclusion of the scan, we are presented with the results. We maximise this window purely for ease of reference. We can see that one file has been discovered and that it is in excellent condition with no overwritten clusters found. This is an ideal candidate for recovery. We can even preview the file prior to restoring it. We may not always be as fortunate. In this instance we are operating in ideal conditions in that we have just deleted the file and immediately moved to recover it before it was overwritten. Had we for example turned the machine off and on again or written or copied lots of files, it's possible that the space created when the file was deleted will be reused. This makes recovery much harder and explains why this process will not always be successful and why keeping an up-to-date backup remains the preferred option. We can highlight the file by clicking on it or check it using the checkbox. Naturally, where there are multiple files to be recovered, more files could be highlighted or checked. From the right-click menu, we can recover either the highlighted or checked file or, with the file or files checked, we can click the recover button. Now we need to select the folder into which the recovered file will be saved. In this instance we choose our documents folder, but this is unwise, and we are warned that we are attempting to recover a file from our main hard drive 
and simultaneously attempting to write the file back to the same drive, which logically reduces the chances of a successful recovery. It's far more sensible to insert an external hard drive or USB stick to recover to. Although we proceeded successfully in this demonstration, in a real world scenario we would heed the warning and use an external drive. We are advised that our recovery has been successful and click OK to clear this dialog. Examining our documents folder, we see that our file has been successfully restored. It can now be copied, moved, edited, deleted or printed as though it had never been deleted. In the interests of experimentation, we scale this up and select all four files before once again holding shift and selecting delete. We accept the warning and with it the permanent deletion of all four files. We again right click on our downloads folder, repeat our scan for deleted files, provide the necessary user account control permissions and observe the scan in progress. At the conclusion, we are happy to note that all four of our deleted files are in excellent condition. We therefore check them all and hit the recover button. We again select the destination, once more our documents folder, and again foolishly accept the risks of restoring to the same drive. Once again, our files are successfully restored. In this instance, quantity and size of recovered files has no bearing. In the real world, this may not be the case, and not every file is as easily recoverable. We would again urge you to watch our tutorials on backup software as a more reliable defence against the unexpected. Nevertheless, Recover is a useful tool for recovering files from deletion. Now that we have witnessed that files can be recovered after apparent deletion, our next video will focus on ways to ensure that confidential files are truly and securely deleted beyond the reach of applications such as Recover. Thank you for watching this tutorial. Hopefully you found it useful. If you could provide a better, faster or more economical solution, let us know in the comments. We'd love to hear from you. If you'd like more, you are very welcome to subscribe to the Tech Fix Flicks YouTube channel by clicking on the subscribe button. Subscription is of course entirely free and provides easy access to all of the videos posted here. Clicking on the neighbouring bell icon means you will be notified whenever a new video is posted. You can also keep in touch by following the official Tech Fix Flicks Twitter account. Until your next Tech Fix, goodbye.